magical money monday what's up y'all we are live count Melton coming to you live with my lifestyleacademy.com where we teach network marketers just like you how to go from average to savage how to fire your boss make more money make it rain help you fire your boss <laughs> help you build an mba a massive bank account and for those of you that are on right now, make sure you let us know if you're watching the replay, where you're tuning in from. I know a lot of you are hopping on live and we are live in five different places, five locations, YouTube, personal profile, business page, My Lifestyle Academy and M Life Nation. So what's up, y'all? And for those of you that don't know Julie Reynolds, Julie is a freaking rock star. She's an incredible leader. She's a good friend. Nadia is even in the background cheering you on, Julie. But uh, you know, Julie's somebody that has built an incredible business, but guess what? She still does all the things, right? Wife, mother, uh, multiple business owner. She's created multiple income streams. And I think a lot of you will love Julie's story and the fact that, you know, she got started like anyone else, right? Like a, a hope and a prayer, like, you know, <laughs> hey, this looks good, sounds good. Hopefully it's legal. <laughs> Hopefully I can make some money. And, you know, she had some different experiences with some different companies uh, where things didn't work out, but she learned a lot. And now she's built this like incredible following on YouTube. That's like her number one platform. So for those of you that love YouTube, definitely make sure you follow Julie. She's crushing it there. Uh, but just in general, she's really good when it comes to all things social media. Plus, she's built an incredible business. Her team is crushing it. One of the top teams within our organization and uh, a team that is very consistent high caliber people. They have a lot of fun. I know they're all, uh, not all, but a bunch of you are headed down to uh, Destin this week, right? To our yeah. place. So I'm excited about that. Uh, but Julie, maybe you could start off because a lot of the people on here, either A, obviously already have a home business or uh, they're looking to get into starting a home business. But I think most people have one. Let us know in the comments if you're in network marketing, how long you've been in the profession, no specific company names, but let us know what kind of products are you marketing? I know we've got people on here uh, from all different companies, but you know, I know a lot of you are wanting other income streams. I know some of you are like, man, it'd be interesting if I could do like, you know, coaching or affiliate marketing or, you know, do some different things. And uh, as much as I love multiple income streams, there is a right and a wrong way to do it. And I hate to say it, but most people, they do it wrong, right? They start one thing and then 30 days later, they're starting something else. And then 30 days later, starting something else. And it's like, you're like the, the trench coat mafia MLM person, right? It's like, I got a little bit of this. I got a little bit of that. I got makeup. I got Forex trading. I got nutrition. I got th that's never effective, right? In fact, you hear a lot, and I'm excited to talk about this. I'm getting fired up just thinking about it. You hear a lot about multiple income streams. And in my opinion, when you're starting, that should be your job and your network marketing business, right? Your home business. But eventually you branch out, but not prematurely because if you bite off more than you can chew, you're bound to fail and you're going to get overwhelmed. You're not going to make a lot of money doing any of those things. So you're just like a part-time spare time person indefinitely because you don't commit to something. And I think it is important for those of you watching before we get into the multiple income streams conversation that Julie is, is an expert at, you, you got to focus on one thing. You got to get that one thing really dialed in before you start other things. I hope that makes sense. I didn't branch out from network marketing. Like I literally was only doing network marketing, which was kind of scary and stressful for a little while because it was just network marketing income from 2008 to about 2013. So for five years, six years, it was just network marketing. So we didn't branch out until we had already become multiple six figure top earners in our network marketing company. So just wanted to throw that out there to you. I'm not here to judge you, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just telling you that's how most of the successful people I know did it did it or created multiple income streams is they got one thing really profitable first, focused on the one thing and then branched out. So anywho, I'm going to stop talking. Julie, excited to have you here. Could you give everybody a little bit of your background and what makes you a, a multiple income expert? Yes. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me here. I am so honored to be a part of this community. And I know there are so many loyal fans on here. So thank you so very much. You guys are absolutely amazing teaching so many of us. So a little bit about my background and guys, if you're an educator on here, raise your hand and say educator, because I know there's a lot of educators that are looking for multiple income streams, right? Because we don't make any money. Um, <laughs> and so my background was, is I was a school teacher. I was a licensed professional counselor, school counselor for about 15 years. I got started in this network marketing space nine years ago, 
this month, which is just absolutely crazy and mind blowing um, because it goes so quickly. And I came in and I started first in makeup. Honestly, I start at first. I thought it was a pyramid scheme. There was no way <laughs> as a licensed professional counselor and a school counselor that I was going to do one of those like pyramid things like that just doesn't happen. Right. And so I got started because I heard that you can make money. And we all know as educators, we don't make enough money for what we do. And um, so somebody says I'm retired and need a second income. See, you're you're speaking my language over here. Right. And so. I got started and I call myself an accidental leader. I had a lot of friends and I was doing makeup and I hit the top ranks of my company four months after joining. I had literally no idea what I was doing. I've never sold a thing in my entire life. Like literally I've never sold. I was like a camp counselor. I was a school (laughs) teacher. I did some tutoring, like never sold anything. And so I started building my network marketing business and had great success. So John, I think it's really, really important what you mentioned about having success first Mm -hmm. so that you don't get squirrel, right? Too many times I see people, I'm going to start this and then I'm going to start this and then I'm going to start this. And now I'm broke because I've started absolutely nothing and I've invested, you know, hundreds and thousands of dollars into something. So get really good at something. And that's what happened to me. I got really good at, learning how to lead. I got really good at understanding social media marketing. I got really good at online marketing. And so I started to create a brand and it's been absolutely amazing. I mean, that's all I can say. I never in a million years thought that I would be having the success that I have had in multiple income streams. And we'll go into like what these are, but number one is my network marketing. It is, Mm. it is, the my husband always jokes with me he's like just for the love it's so much more lucrative it's so much less stressful like just go 100 percent in your network marketing company and i was like no 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 i'm about multiple income streams and um it's it's amazing and so that's a little bit about my story it's been nine years i've created this brand i've created this loyal following and i will say Network marketing works, multiple income streams work. But as I was saying before, it takes work, right? Yeah. And so that's why you want to get really, really good at something before you can then go branch off into other things as well. How big of an issue do you think it is, though, with people being impatient? Because that's really what it is, right? They're like, oh, I've been at this thing for six weeks or six months or a year. I'm not rich yet. <laughs> Clock's ticking. I'm not rich yet. Let me go. Let me go join some other things. Let me go sell some things that are easier. And it's funny because they think starting these other things prematurely is going to speed up their results and their 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 success. When in reality, it actually it's like they're taking a major detour. They're gonna have to bust a Yui. <laughs> they're gonna make a U-turn because they're gonna realize like this this is actually confusing me, confusing my audience. I'm all over the place. There's no clarity on who I serve, who I help, what I do. So could you talk about that? Because I think that's the one big challenge of social media these days is, you know, we we all see what everyone else is doing. We think, well, if Julie can sell a course or if Julie can do all these other things and I can do that. And they're trying to copy someone or model someone that's like four, five, six, 10 years ahead of them. Right. And that's that's really it, right? So you have to, what I would say is that until you're ready to go full time in your network marketing business, mm-hmm. don't even think about adding something else on because you are going to very much confuse your audience, right? right. And so it, 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 it takes so much work to build these other income streams, honestly, and if you're, you could, the grass is only green where you water it. Right. Mm. And so if you're watering multiple different lawns, if you're watering your lawn, your neighbor's lawn and your, you know, everybody else's lawn, there's not enough water. There's only so much time in the day and as busy moms, which I know a lot of us on here are right. And we might be working another job and we might be, you know, taking care of our kids. And, you know, sometimes we have to take care of our husbands too, because they act like kids. Like, let's be honest. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> there's only so much time in the day. So get yeah. really good at one thing 
and then start to branch off, right? Like a trunk of a tree doesn't, the limbs don't start low, they start higher up. And the same thing happens with your business. I love it. Y'all smash the hard button if you're loving this conversation. And again, I know we're live in like five different places. So whether you're you know, in a Facebook group, you're on my profile, business page, YouTube, you can share this. You can tag some teammates, let them know about this conversation because I think it's so important. And, and could you also talk to the educators, uh, school teachers, you know, Maybe they're they're you know in the in the process of of looking at other income streams. They don't know anything about starting a business. They don't have an entrepreneurial mindset. Could you maybe talk to that person that's like, I want to do it, but I never sold anything before? Absolutely. Here's the thing: I never did anything like this before either. And, and I know we can't make income claims over here, but I can tell you that I had 15 years in a master's degree. I mean, I, I worked a long time in the schools and I think I got, I don't even know if I ever got a raise. Honestly, I don't even know if I ever got a raise. I got like a cost of living increase and I got like the next step, but never in a million years did I get a raise in the 15 years that I was there. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, always, always, always wanted to be, it was my goal to make six figures. It's never going to happen in education unless you're there for like 30 years and maybe in New York, because that's like the highest paying one that I worked at. I worked in New York City. So don't dis. But then the cost of living is a lot higher there. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why they pay you six figures, right? right um, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, so, but besides that, like you have so many skills as an educator you already have the leadership abilities that you have been, I mean, you've been leading a class of how many kids, right? 20, 30, sometimes 35 kids. Like you have the leadership ability. You have the ability to go and speak in front of people because that's what you do all day, every day. And I'm telling you, if you can captivate the attention of a 15 year old boy or an eight year old girl, you have the ability to show up on social media. That's all I can say. Um, and so don't, I mean, I am so grateful right now that I am not in the education system. I love it with all my heart, but I was getting up at 645. I was leaving my house at 645 in the morning. When I lived in DC, my kids would come with me 45 minutes mm -hmm. in the car at young age. And then we would drive for, I mean, they were spending an hour and a half in the car every single day going back and forth. And then when we moved here to Denver, where I currently am, we were leaving at six. I was leaving at 645 in the morning. My husband was taking my kids to school. I was working. I was coming home at five and starting all over again. I never got to be a part of their school because I was so busy taking care of other kids, which was fulfilling, but I really wanted to take care of my own. And so give it a shot because the skills that you have are already there. It is funny too, when people are like, ah, oh, just trying to find motivation or I'm trying to get over my fear of, of doing something like this. And then I'm like, Oh, you know, what does your day look like? You know, what would be your goal? And when you find out what people have to do in, in corporate America or in like a normal job or career, I'm like, doesn't that in itself motivate you? Like you could, you can only make so much money. You only make money when you work, when you don't work, you don't get paid. Uh, you got to deal with rush hour traffic to and from work every day. And just, just all the, the the politics, right? Office politics and just all the things you have to deal with in, in traditional, you know, corporate America. Someone telling you what to do, telling you when you, you know, leave work, when you need to be at work. If you don't show up for work, you get in trouble, you don't get paid. And if you don't show up long enough, you get fired. I mean, like, shouldn't that be motivation enough? And this is what, like, I, I try to get through to people. Like, you don't need a why that makes you cry. I don't believe that. But it, it certainly does help at least for most people to remember why you got started. And if you don't win, who loses? Like who misses out because you don't pursue your goals, your dreams, you, you don't go out there and make it happen. And because you allow excuses and fear to take control. And, you know, the first company I was in, it was so helpful having her in my ear when the limiting beliefs would would creep in and she would say you can make money or make excuses but you can't do it can't do both choose wisely so every time you're making an excuse or a justification by the way some of you have really good reasons with what's going on with life with with your family with with your job like you maybe have health issues or you're a single mom a single parent maybe you have some different things going on like i get it but 
you have to also admit that we all have the same 24 hours in a day. And there are plenty of people out there that were worse off than you that figured it out. You know, I just connected with a guy today, him and his wife have 11 kids. I don't think I've ever met anybody that has that many kids. Like I, I can't even fathom, but that's also 11 reasons to get over yourself and get over your stinking thinking and your limiting beliefs and your analysis paralysis and all the things that hold you back and just yeah. start the dang thing. In fact, I would ask you, Julie, what would you tell someone that is? So first of all, we did clarify that like, you don't want to try to create multiple income streams prematurely. You should try to create a full-time income in your home business first, then start to diversify. But if someone is ready, right, they're, they're wanting to diversify, you know, they're where they need, what would you say that looks like where they could start to create other income streams without jeopardizing their integrity? Absolutely. So what I would say is if you're, if you're ready to then go and diversify, start to create a brand for yourself if you haven't already done that. Because the way to generate the other different income streams can stem from your brand. And that's where the integrity piece comes in, right? So you're right. not known as the everything person. You are known, like I started with network marketing and as a therapist, then I started to branch off into, I saw that people just couldn't get over themselves and do video. And I was like, no, like you've got to be able to do video in order to be successful in this online space. So I started to talk about video and confidence and mm. network marketing because that's who I was at my core. As I saw all this stinking thinking that was inhibiting people from growing their business, right? They, they couldn't get out of their own way. They were just so stuck up here. And I was like, I'm a therapist. Like, let me help them. That's what I need to do. And so I started to create how to use video. And that started to create my brand where I started to then create a, my first course, which was actually the confidence to go live on social media, because this was back when lives were, you know, like really blowing up and you needed to be live. And so it all tied into who I was, but I couldn't do these courses until I had already had the success, mm. right? And that's the key. So I started with network marketing, I started to build a brand, and then I started to figure out how my brand can then further help more people, which was, you guys need to be doing video. And then it evolves from there into my YouTube and how I teach people how to do YouTube now, you know? And then, so that's one of the income streams is course creation. And it's a significant income stream for me. Um, but I'll tell you, it takes work, it takes time, it takes dedication. You and Nadia know, right? You don't just create a course and then boom, you're done. Like right. there's so much that goes in behind the scenes. And so thank goodness my network marketing company has already been, you know, a six figure business before I went and did that because okay. it allowed me the, the resources both monetarily and time wise to create it and bring it to market. Yeah. And, and it's cool too, because then you can attract other amazing people. I mean, that's, you know, people are like, why do you guys do so much free content? I mean, listen, any content creator would say the same thing. It, it helps them build brand awareness. It helps them get attention. It helps them attract people. And then of course, there's always going to be a small percentage, maybe five, 10% of those people that follow you for free, that get value from your podcast, your YouTube, your Facebook, your, your reels, your TikTok, whatever they're on your email list, whatever that looks like. And they want to they want to have a deeper connection or they want to they want to get coaching or they're going to here's how you know what to create. If you're like, hey, I want to I want to create a course. I want to do coaching. In fact, I would say start with coaching before you create a course, because then you're really like, you know, working with people one on one and you're creating testimonials, you're creating stories, success stories. And then you kind of know, like, OK, it's the same four, five, six, ten issues that people are having. I'm going to create a course around those four, five, six, ten issues and and help the people that are like the other people I've been working with. Or, you know, what's a great thing, too, is when you're a network marketing leader, you kind of mentioned this, Julie, right? It's like you already know what people are struggling with on your own team. Is it possible that there's other people, not just in other teams, other companies, whatever, but other industries that are struggling with those same things? And the answer is yes, yes, yes. So yeah. it makes so much sense that if you're ready to start diversifying, you're ready to start monetizing that you would want to start small. You would want to start with 
you know, maybe a small group of people that you could work with or one-on-one clients and, and be okay with maybe your first product launch, your first course, your first, you know, coaching program, not doing very well. Yeah. And here's another thing I love. If you build a following and people know you, like you and trust you, not only can you attract people to your network marketing business, they'll buy your products just because they like you, they trust you. And they're like, hey, if you're suggesting things, you've always su- steered me in the right direction. Like your brand is basically your digital reputation, right? So what's beautiful is at some point, you can also diversify your income by doing affiliate marketing. And here's what affiliate marketing is to me. Now, let's be very clear. Affiliate marketing is affiliate marketing. It's not in another name for MLM. Like I'll give you an example. There are some companies out there and listen to each their own. I know some companies or some distributors in those companies are probably be like, you're talking about my company. No, you're not the only one, but I don't, I don't like when a distributor is called an affiliate because an affiliate is really just like, I'm affiliated with this company. And if I refer this company, they pay me an affiliate commission. There's no downline. There's no structure. As soon as you get into overriding other people that are selling, that is no longer affiliate. In my opinion, I think like affiliate programs can be like up to one or two levels, maybe. But again, if there's a downline involvement, Julie and I were talking about this the other day too. It's kind of funny because some companies will be like, we only pay three levels. So we're not a real MLM. It's like, yeah, that's actually worse because that means you could have someone making millions on your fifth level and you get paid nothing. Someone on your eighth level, you get a Julie Reynolds on your eighth level and you don't get paid because we're not MLM. Like that sounds terrible. But the point is if you're building a team, it's MLM. If you're not building a team, you're just simply sharing, it's affiliate. But you could promote other people's programs. You could promote other people's products and just get referral commissions, right? You see these like influencers doing that. You see these bloggers, you know, they promote something that either they get paid upfront or they get paid back in commissions. But again, I go back to network marketing because let's be honest, if you're with a good network marketing company like (laughs) social retail, you know, we get paid not just a one-time commission, we get paid every time that customer orders. And the company is helping market and maintain that customer market to that customer, educate that customer, sharing offers and special promos. So at the end of the day, if you are a school teacher or you do have a regular job, you're looking to supplement your income. I know for some reason, it's really weird, Julie. Have you seen this too on like TikTok and Instagram? Like affiliate marketing is this like sexy buzzword, but then MLMs are like pyramid schemes. And it's like, are you kidding me? Like affiliate marketing is basically you not being able to make money on the people you introduce to the same opportunity. So the company is getting paid on your referrals, but you're not. So with that being said, you could get into affiliate marketing at some point. And I know the buzzword and the appeal of affiliate marketing sounds so good, but again, they don't typically pay as well and they don't pay residual like network marketing. So my affiliate marketing is that I've, cause I created, you know, multiple, multiple incomes over here. And one of them is affiliate marketing, but it's one and done which right. makes it really nice because I don't have to create anything, right? So like if John and Nadia put out a course and they're like, Julie, would you be an affiliate of mine? Sweet, sign me up because right. I don't need to create another thing, but I only promote, and here's the thing that people do wrong. They promote everything under the sun. Mm-hmm. You, Your integrity and who you are, like John said, like it is your, it's your, digital business card. I would never promote something that I didn't 110% stand behind by myself, recommend for other people, recommend for my family, because I don't want just a quick buck, right? Like my name is my everything and and don't take that away from me. But it's really, really nice to do affiliate marketing, especially for courses or especially for events or something like Mm -hmm. that, because you're not the one that's creating it. Because behind a course are landing pages and opt-ins and freemiums and this and Facebook ads and all of this. And instead, I just literally share out my link and kid you not, make thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars just by sharing to my audience but it only happens because I've taken the time to create a brand for myself that has helped the like, note and trust factor so that my audience knows me. Yeah. And they, and you, you said it multiple times, they trust you, you know, they know that, Hey, if Julie's promoting this and she stands behind it, she's putting her stamp of approval on it. I know it's a good program or I know it's a good product. And that's really where, you know, and, and Gary Vaynerchuk has probably hammered this more than anybody over the years. And I love that about him is, is he's all about 
you know, your reputation, your brand, you know, promoting things that are aligned with your beliefs and who you are and not doing it to make money. Right. 100%. It's very similar to network marketing. If you join a network marketing business, now you might get in in the beginning, just like we all did to make some money. But once you get established, you, you realize very quickly when you go through the training and you get plugged in, the people that tend to do the best are the ones that are just, they have an abundant mentality. They give, they give, they give, they, they put themselves out there. They're training the team. They're responding to messages. They're in the trenches with their teams. They're working on themselves. They're pouring into others. You know, it, it becomes so much more than just income. It becomes about fulfillment, impact, you know, some of what you talked about, right? And the fact is, when you show up in that way, on your social media, for your audience, the community that you're going to build, because that's what it's all about. It's about connection and community on the back end. When you build that, when you establish that, you don't need a huge following. You can, how many of you, if you haven't heard of it, you got to get this book. It's called, I think, 1,000 Raving Fans, something like that. And he just talks about like, if you have 1,000 raving fans, you don't need hundreds of thousands of followers. If you have 1,000 people that love your stuff, they share your stuff, they promote your stuff, not because they're getting paid necessarily, sometimes that's the case, but even if they're not getting paid, they promote it because they genuinely love your stuff they love your product, they love your company, they love you, you'll never worry about money again. Not 100,000. You see these influencers that have 100,000 followers. And you know what? A lot of them don't monetize. They don't make money. They're all over the place because they're popular, but they're not trustworthy. There's a big difference. It's uh, somebody uh, just said, Kevin Kelly, a thousand true fans. It's so mm. true. Like we think of we think of this online space is like the high school popularity contest, right? It is no long. I mean, it's not, we're not in high school anymore. You know, there's, there's no more popularity. If you have a hundred loyal people, you have got a six figure business, right? Yep. And the only way to do that is to put yourself out there and mm -hmm. to build and to create a brand and to provide value and not just go and sell and sell and sell and sell. Well, Julie, can we also point this out? It's harder and harder now to build a following and get more new leads, right? Get new followers. And and, and it's kind of, again, I love going back to network marketing because it really is all one and the same. You just said you could make six figures with 100 people. And that's really the same in our business, right? Our business, you could have 100 teammates. And if you just help them, like, why do we spend so much time trying to build a new following or build a new team? You should spend time on that. But if you're spending all your time on new customers, new recruits, new followers, well, what about the people that are already following you? What about the people you already have a relationship with? What about the people already ordering from you or that are already on your team? If you just really, really, really go to that next level, helping your existing customer get a result, help your existing social marketer, distributor, downline, whatever, get results. Guess what? The money will take care of itself. 100%. When you have a servant heart and it doesn't matter who it is, whether it's your upline, your downline, your sideline, you don't even care. You are literally just trying to provide as much value as you possibly can. Right. Before you give the more you get. It really is. I, it sounds cliche, but I've seen it like in my business. And I've seen my business as somebody who would never ever dreamed of being able to make six figures. I've seen it happen. The yeah. more I'm able to give and pour into people, the more my brand grows, the more my businesses grow. And so it's, it's truly, it's, it's amazing. I love it. And, and you, you know, I love that you talk about good, it. Right? Yeah, it, it makes you feel good. It really does. When people and are thanking you, when you're getting people that are saying thank you, you know you're on the right path. And it doesn't matter. Like we you gotta look at it like it's like market research, right? When someone reaches out to me asking a question, now sure, if they're on my team or they're one of my leaders or personal enrollment, there's gonna be a, that much more support and guidance. But at the end of the day, even if it's like someone on a different team and a different company, like I just want to help people, genuinely help people. Now, again, you got to, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to beg and chase people. You don't want to drag anchors, right? You don't want to have people on your team that like, literally they're just like an energy suck. Like they're an asshole, right? How many have assholes on our team? They just ask questions. They never do anything. They don't, you're not going to be like on top of them as much, 
right? You got to spend your time with people that are putting forth the time and the effort, positive, coachable people. But at the end of the day, like it only takes a minute to respond to someone. It only takes a minute to say hello or, or thank someone for the support. And, you know, maybe I get questions from people that are in other companies or on other teams and, you know, either me or my VA, you know, we're responding and helping because we, we want to be a lighthouse for people. We want to, we want people to know that like, we're going to, we have their back and we're going to do our best to help them. And, and what's beautiful is if I can help them, I know that they're not the only one struggling with that thing, that issue. So I can also use their question, their struggle for content that I'm creating, right? I can answer this person's question, overcome this person's objection by creating a video or a piece of content that can help them. But there's probably other people that have the same question. Like, let me give you just an example. Okay. Uh, Vicky on here says, what about when people say it's too expensive? Now, not the first time, definitely not the last time somebody is going to have that question. Now I could answer Vicky or, which I could totally answer Vicky, right? But I could also create a piece of content, which by the way, we already have content and scripts and, you know, resources to help people overcome that objection because Vicky's asking a question that countless people have asked over the years. And guess what? Countless more will ask. So you got to also look at it. Like I said, you do a market research. So when you're getting, like Julie said earlier, the same questions about the fear of getting over themselves and being confident enough to do videos, she's like light bulb. Like this is something I can help people with. Absolutely. And, and I just want to add, like, then what happens is it becomes really fun. And then you start to develop like passion projects, right? So Mm. I, because I've been able to give and give and give and give and, and give so much content, I'd be able to then create these passion projects, side income streams. And Mm -hmm. so one of them, I created a kids to multiple kids books and more in the works to help kids with mental health, you know, and that's like, that's the one that like fuels me. And so it's just, and I didn't expect it to really become a different income stream, but it did. And it came from me just giving and giving and giving and over on TikTok, my anxiety tips, cause that's what I do is I'm a therapist, right? <laughs> really taking off. And so that's where the fun happens because then you're then like that feeling of really starting to feel good and really starting to help as many people as possible and make a more global impact um, just fuels you even more. I love that. And, and you really do have a responsibility to sell something that people can buy. Now, I know that sounds funny. Some people are very uncomfortable with sales. Sales is really just a belief issue. Like if you struggle with selling, you struggle with belief most likely. Mm-hmm. It, it's like, would you agree Julie and I could sell anything we believed in? You could just tell because we have a lot of passion enthusiasm. We also have a lot of knowledge and and expertise, experience with the things that we're involved with. But that's where it starts, right? It starts with, I don't know what I'm doing, but this is where I want to go. Let me start learning. Let me start growing. Let me start implementing because the result you're seeing today is the consequence of commitment, discipline, sacrifice, years and years and years of struggle, years and years and years of growth, years and years of of being disappointed, decline, all the things to get to this point. And it it really is like, if you make a decision and you get committed to it, it really is life-changing. You can create your own economy. And and like Julie said, she started with these passion projects that have become, you know, profit centers for her, for her business. And she's not just making an income, she's making an impact. And like, that's really what it's all about. Like if you can find a way to generate income, doing something that helps people, doing something that gives you financial and time freedom. Like those should be your four pillars right there, right? Income, freedom, impact, making a difference. Like that's a really big thing and something that you're passionate about, something that you love to talk about, something that you know, like a little something, something about. And, and you know, if you're, if you're feeling like, well, I'm not there yet, well, great. That's why Brene Brown is quoted so much by me because I love her comment, her quote, where she says, choose courage over comfort. So you don't need to be confident. You need to be courageous. You need to start taking action and say, how can I make a difference? How can I show up in a way that's going to help people? And yeah, I'm not going to you know, create multiple income streams yet. I'm not going to diversify yet. But if I start showing up with value, with things that I love talking about that I know can help people, you know, I always tell the story of the woman that um, was into scrapbooking and she joined a bunch of scrapbooking groups 
that was her passion. She loves scrapbooking. I didn't know that was really like a thing. She got into it. She joined a bunch of groups, made a bunch of friends, shared tips, shared her own scrapbooks, and just like became a part of the community, not to sell and pitch people, but just to make friends and do stuff that she was into. And she ended up doing like 3000 in sales the following month from complete strangers that she met in scrapbooking groups. This is how it starts. And you have no idea where it could go. But if you just start showing up with content creation and connecting on the back end to build community, all the C's, you will amaze yourself. 100%. And what I will say is, you know, one of those things that happens is, and this is what I tell people, don't be selfish. Mm. You have got a gift in your mouth that is going to help somebody. Yes. And even if it starts with one person and you are able to help that one person, whether it be scrapbooking, like what if it's somebody that they helped whose husband passed away mm. and they wanted to make this beautiful scrapbook and it was like this beautiful honor, but you were too selfish to share your scrapbooking techniques. Right. You know, I, I don't want to sell. I don't, I don't want to sell or gosh, what I have no value to give, you know, cause I hear that one a lot. I've got nothing of value to give. Well, dude, if you're like an amazing scrapbooker, you could be changing somebody's life. Mm -hmm. And so stop being selfish by not sharing, you know, because it really is the bigger the impact. And I, I heard Tony Robbins said this in one of his books that I was reading. It said, the more you give, it actually benefits you more and lasts longer than if you were to go and buy something else yourself, right? Yeah. If you can donate your time, your energy, your money, whatever it is, it feels so much better in our hearts than going out and buying a brand new purse, right? So go and be a giver. Yeah, I love that. Julie, you're amazing. Any any uh, final tips before we wrap this up for people that are wanting to uh, create multiple income streams? And then also if you could share with like, where are some of the best places they could find you and follow you as well? Yeah, no, absolutely. So what I would say, the first thing to do, honestly, is start really small. Start with an email list. Create mm. an email list and just collect emails. And that's like a really good starting point that's going to be like, you know, like where I talked about the tree in the beginning. It's going to be like your first little branch is, is that email list. And then start to what we call nurture that email list. Send out emails, send out tips, send out strategies, right? You don't even need to sell anything. Just keep sharing the videos that you're making or the content that you're creating that's going to help them. So that's one thing that you can do right now to start thinking about generating those multiple income streams. Because with an email list, like John was saying, if you've got 100 people on that list that are loyal to you, you have now got a six-figure business. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's easy and it's simple and it's not overwhelming to start right there. Yeah. And find creative ways to tell your story. Because I think when people, the, the best way to attract people is to relate to people. And the best way to relate to people is to start with what you know, your background, your, you know, where you grew up, like your, your uh, shortcomings, some of the things you've had to overcome. And you want to speak, and I talked about this recently, I think uh, last week we did a training talking about what Shalene Johnson says, which is speak from a scar and not an open wound, right? So when you start telling stories, Make sure it's from things like in the past. Like if you're in the middle of a nasty divorce, you don't want to go live and be like, man, this mofo. Blah, 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 blah. Like, no, 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 no. But you, if you could speak from like a past situation or something you went through, like I'm all about authenticity, but I do think the whole like uh, speaking from a scar, not an open wound is a really good analogy. But um, I love that. I think it's really important for you to start showing up. Like you said, start small, start giving, start. Don't even think about it. Like, how am I going to make money? You think about like, how can I help people outside of, you know, my, my, my typical strategy to, to monetize? Like, how can I help people outside of my, my normal team? Like, how can I provide value and connect with people and give them something that can really help them? And you're not going to know for sure what that's going to look like. That's why I always challenge people. We've heard uh, to create a habit it takes 21 days. That's why I challenge people to go live every day for 21 days, right? 21 days, do a live video for five minutes, just five minutes, go live, just talk about things, tell your stories, talk about your products talk about your network marketing business. Maybe for the first week, you're just telling stories and sharing your why, why you're starting something new, why you love the company you're working with. The next week, you can share things that you're learning. The following week, you can share things that that you have had success with or uh, something that's in your, your, your wheelhouse, if you will. So imagine you just did that for seven days. You did, you know, this, this kind of topic, these types of topics, your story, whatever, your experiences. The second week you told stories or you talked about like 
you know, some of the things you're learning, some of the experiences you're having currently with your, your company, your products, how you're growing a business. And then, you know, that third week, talk about some of the successes and things in your wheelhouse. And you'll start to get that clarity on like, ooh, this is getting a good response or ooh, I... I feel like I really enjoy this topic of conversation. Let me start doing reels and TikToks about these topics. Let me start doing some stories, Instagram and Facebook stories around these topics, around these stories that that I can like your personal stories that you're sharing in your Insta or Facebook stories. And you'll you'll start to see that people are paying attention to you. And that's what Julie, right? You figured out like there's a lot of people that needed that mental health help. And, you know, ADD and anxiety and some of these things like you were like, wow, like I'm getting a great response and I genuinely love talking about it. So, so, so powerful. Where can people find you or follow you? What would be some of the best ways? Oh, my gosh. I'm everywhere. You know, I'm like (laughs) omnipresent. Right. Isn't that the goal? Right. And that's I mean, that's a whole nother training. But once you start to build one social media following and you have success, then you start to branch out. Just keep watering one social media platform. Mm. However, you can find me over here on Facebook and actually YouTube are my two favorite um, social media platforms. Although I am loving the TikTok now um, as well, but yeah. those are the definitely the places that you can find me. And- well, for for the for the people that want to crush it on YouTube, they need to follow you. Yeah, for sure. Because you yeah. you are one of the best when it comes to YouTube and YouTube's a beast. I mean, it really is. It's one of the best platforms and it's not promoted a whole lot in our profession, mostly because it's not like it's not the typical, like simple duplicatable strategy. But from a longevity standpoint, I mean, it's, it, it's a long term insurance plan. Yes. That's what I call it. It's It's insurance. It literally is like it's the gift that keeps on giving because your videos don't go away, right. you know, exactly. and, yeah. and, and, and they just keep showing up and showing up and showing up and showing up. And that's the beauty of what, you know, well, YouTube can do for you. Well, oh, it's so cool, right? Like you could do a video today on reels or TikTok that goes viral for like a second and maybe you repurpose it, maybe. Right. But with a video, you can do a YouTube video today. I don't want to go down a whole rabbit hole of this. We got to have you on a different, different uh, session for that, but you can do a YouTube video today that people five years from now are watching and you're generating leads and sales from like, that's why Julie was like, I need to, I need to figure this out. And you have crushed it. And and that's the thing is like on my YouTube, I mean, just from a, from a sales perspective, from a lead generation, right. John's going to go and uplist, upload this onto YouTube and people can watch this from years to come. And I have created videos that have literally generated me. And I kid you not hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it was like three years ago and I'm still getting orders and I'm still growing my email list and I'm still doing all of that. It, it truly is amazing. And then, you know, it's, it's time for another, you know, another training, so to speak, but, um, SEO is very, very powerful. And that's actually the last income stream. We didn't even talk about it. The last income stream is I started an SEO website that talks all about like affiliate stuff and stuff about the belly and the brain and the gut. And I'm so excited about it. Um, Um, And that's an additional income stream. But it all stems from staying my lane and doing exactly, you know, the do and watering one piece of grass before I moved on to another lawn. I love it. That's so good. Well, I appreciate you being on today. I know it was kind of last minute and uh, you, you, you know, always over deliver. You always, you know, share the goods. And I know everybody's getting, getting a ton of uh, insight from you. So, uh, and you're so inspiring. Thank you. Hey, y'all smash the hard button. If you loved it, if you really loved it, smash the share button, share this with your teammates. Obviously, as usual, this is a generic training. I know we're again, live in five different places right now. StreamYard. Uh, I love StreamYard. It's so cool. But yeah, if you can uh, share it, Tag some people. Awesome. Smash the heart button. Awesome. Uh, drop Julie a follow on you know TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, whatever account you're on, Facebook. Let her know how much you appreciated her. And uh, happy Money Monday, y'all. Let's go crush the rest of this month. Bye, Julie. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're the best. See ya.